Hi friends, Russ here again, having a lot more Daisy Lever gun fun. And I want to show you what we uh, have discovered as far as solving a little mystery about a wide frame Daisy that I have. I picked up this particular, as you see on the uh, decal on the side, it says 99 Champion. It says that on both sides. This gun is all rusty. I did grind off some of the... Um, the rust and bad paint that was on here and in doing so I got some clues as to what this gun really is is a 99B now if any of you are familiar with the designation of B well it says so right here let's see if we can get a good look at you can just barely see it 99B on here the B designation is for some of the more modern guns now if you have a model 1938 or a 111 40 Red Rider these have been uh, modernized in current times with a 19, um, 1938B designation for your Red Riders. Some of the things that this gun has in common with the current Red Rider or the Buck or the 1999 that is being produced currently, some of the things um, give you a clue as to the differences between this gun and what we're used to seeing on many of the other wide frame daisies, like this one. This is a model 90, 95, I believe, 96. This is a model 96. And as you can tell, the biggest difference is the uniform diameter on the barrel shroud all the way down. This is one of the project guns I'm working on right now. I'm going to turn this into a spectacular little something different. But... It does not have the step-down barrel. And that is vital because if you look on something like a uh, this 1938B, um, it has the uniform size shroud and then it steps down from here. That tells us that there are two different diameters between the front of the barrel shroud and what is inside where the action takes place on the piston assembly and where the compression chamber is. So, that's one of the things. Also, one of the things this has in common with the newer guns is this is where the loading gate goes. Now, this has been stripped out. All I had when I picked this gun up was this shell. Everything has been stripped off. There's no rear sight. The, um, the shot tube and the abutment, and everything was missing. Also, somebody cut off the front of this, the front inch or so, where the muzzle plug would be with the front sight. So it's totally missing. I didn't have that to go by. All I had was the 99B designation, the fact that it had a loading gate on there. Of course, it has the higher pivot point, as these do, for the modern type cocking lever. But if you notice, there's also another difference. You see where this hole is drilled? That's actually the hole for the trigger assembly to be held in. It's in a totally... I'm going to try to keep that in place here. Maybe you can, eh, maybe you can see it. Maybe we can't. That's in a different position from where this trigger screw is. Where this trigger screw is, is closer to the top of the arch. This one is much lower from the top of the arch. Instead of being here, it's much lower. And also in a different position front to back. So, whenever I try to find what kind of trigger we go into there, this is the trigger that goes into that Model 96. It does not fit this 99 Champion. Now... And a lot of the uh, 99, 499 um, target type guns, they have their own trigger assembly, a little square assembly inside with a self-contained spring and so forth. But what I found also in trying to um, replace that trigger is that you can use, let me grab one back here, And this is a broken one, but you can use this, what I like to call the intermediate style trigger assembly. It 
is the plastic trigger. It did have a cross bolt safety, but that broke, unfortunately, out of there. Also, this is similar to what they're using now with the uh, anti bear trap ratchet assembly, which would be hooked onto the side. These, those can be modified to produce something like this, and that's what we're going to use to replace the trigger assembly in this champion whenever we finally get around to putting things together. So, the issue I had was, I was used to replacing things like the abutments and the abutment washers and the plunger, and the plunger seals in the wide frame daisies with something like this. Here's the abutment washer that would have been in, let's say, that 96. Okay? And it mates up pretty good with the diameter of this plunger. And these fit also the Model 25, the little pump guns. The newer type daisies, and this is the abutment seal, which would go right against that abutment washer so that whenever this compresses, it bangs right up against that rubber washer. The newer daisies, like your Red Riders and so forth, you can get nowadays, have this type. What's the difference? Yeah, if you look close, the diameter is different. The diameter is different. They are made to mate up with a shot tube feeder abutment unit that fits inside of the gun and stops where the two sizes step down. So I saw the configuration on this gun. I thought, oh, this is not going to be a problem. I'll just try to put in one of these. And whenever I fed it in there, it just fell all the way through and out the front of the gun. Too small, much too small. So I thought, okay, that solves it. This has got to be the right size. I fed one of these in, and it stopped. What happened on the back, since this was stripped out, somebody must have got really ballistic with it. On the back of this, let me get something to point this out with here. If you look in here, let me try to get this out of the way so we can see it. Okay. Right up in here, these, the opening, it's hard to tell, the mouth on this shield that runs all the way back in was compressed somehow, and it was compressed uniformly. Would not let the shot tube with the abutment feed into it, and I couldn't, I couldn't see that, so I wanted to find out exactly what was going on. I thought, well, if somebody did all this demolition on this gun, maybe they also got in there and did something very abusive with the inside. So I took an inside caliper. This is a, this is a great little tool if you're going to do comparison on sizes and so forth. This is meant to check the inside of dimensions versus the um, loop calipers to check the outside. So I took this, I fed it in to the back end, brought it out just to where it touched both sides, and whenever I went a little deeper, I found out it was loose. That told me that the inside of this gun in the receiver was actually larger than the port in the back where it fed in. So what I did, I held it to that size on the inside, brought it out, compared it to one of these, and sure enough, it was just the right size for this to fit in. All I had to do was find a way to widen the back end of that shield in there so that it would accept this being fed into it and I could drive it all the way down where it's supposed to be. I knew this would fit. 
I just had to be able to get it past whatever abuse was done to the inside of that shield on the back end of the receiver. So I made it what's called a swedge, a little tapered thing, kind of a funnel shape, very gradual. And I forced it in there. It, what, it winged that out just enough for me to get in there with a pair of pliers and move the edges of the inside of that open. You can just barely see that in here. The little edges here. And that held it into a place where I could now feed in one of these and it would go all the way down to where it belongs. To make sure that I had the right depth on it, I took a plunger assembly, which I'm going to have to rebuild to be able to use it properly. But I fed it in there to make sure it's in the right position to grab the caulking lever. So, I could have saved myself a lot of grief, and I want to send some thanks to a couple of people. Cobalt327 was scratching his head on this one, and um, Shane Bruce from over there at Restomod Daisy, he did a demo on one of the older type guns that have this smaller abutment on it. And just to make sure that everything was copacetic inside, I'd like to... Uh, Thank them for their efforts. But um, Mark, Shane, I think we finally found out what was wrong. Somebody got a little ballistic on the inside of this gun. Now that I have it back to a place where I know I can reproduce the interior on this, I can get a stock for it, um, probably get it back in service. I'll use it for one of my projects. Maybe I'll make an uh, attractive little carbine out of it. Well, we'll see how that goes. Well, folks, this is Russ, and this is the problem, or the issue, the mystery, solved on this 99 Champion. If you have any comments, please subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.